Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bruce Muffson. I am a licensed clinical social worker, and we are taping this. My good friend Rob in the background, of course, you can't see him, but uh, this is coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, what am I about to do? Uh, what I'm going to do is Rob is a fan of hip hop, and he had said that Kendrick Lamar, one of his favorite singers, had released several songs, and his latest song had talked about depression and suicide. And he had said, Bruce, because I work for his company, he has a mental health, co mental health care company here in Las Vegas, it would be interesting to get a clinical perspective on these two songs and go over some interviews that Kendrick Lamar had made and kind of break it down clinically and express how he talks about suicide and depression and get an overall picture. Now, granted, Kendrick and I probably don't come from the same background, and I'm probably not one of his buying fans, but after listening to his songs several times and watching the videos and seeing the interviews that he had done, it became very interesting to me what he's trying to say and how he's trying to say it. And I felt this would be helpful for people who are suffering from depression and suicidal behavior. And I wanted to give a shout out to Kendrick to respect him, to say, wow, for you to tackle a subject of this magnitude, Given your background, given your fan base, given your history, it takes a lot of guts. So I want to say I commend you off the top. Okay, we'll go right into it. We're not going to waste any time. He had done a radio interview uh, in Houston called 93.7 The Beat with Devi Dev. And this is breaking off the single I. And he talked about dealing with depression throughout his life. And it was interesting how he brought up money, and he talked about fame, fortune, and success, and how do you handle it, and how often that leads to depression. It's very interesting because for many people, we think that if we have money, we have fame, automatically life's going to be good, going to be great. In many cases it is, but in many cases it's not, because one of the people I remember, you know, Biggie Smalls back in my day, um, he had made a song called More Money, More Problems. So I understand that perspective. It also talks about the streets and going up in Compton and growing up in Compton and in a sense getting out of Compton, but Compton never really leaving him. Plus, you know, you often make a comment, you know, you could take a kid out of Compton, but you can't take Compton out of the kid. And that's kind of what he's dealing with in his songs and his own personal life. You know, he makes the song, I Love Myself. And to me, when you say that, it, it, it talks about your own insecurity. You know, who am I? No self-respect. And in video, in the video that I watched, he walks through the scenes with the white t-shirt and everything around him is a darkness. And in clinical perspectives, when you're wearing white, white indicates purity, cleanliness, higher level, higher plane. And everything that he's running through, running through the streets, darkness, shadows, flames. Yet he, it's almost like a, a Christ-like figure you know, he's searching, he's trying to find something about himself, and that's the white, the whiteness of it. Um, fame equals depression. It's very common. You know, everyone from Elvis, is a, is a, there's a perspective, that everyone from Elvis on always wore dark sunglasses when they became, quote, quote, famous. Because does fame make you happy? There's a, a documentary I saw a few weeks ago called The Legend of Shep Gordon, who was a legendary agent, and still is, I'm assuming, for many years, and he had said of the hundreds of celebrities that he had worked with as their agent, as their manager, fame did not make people happy. It made people unhappy, actually. They couldn't handle it. They couldn't express it. They didn't know how to deal with it. So he felt that there was more to life than just being famous, which, you know, to his credit, Kendrick talks about. I like the fact that the interviewer, uh, Devi Dev, she made up a very good comment. She said, black men in the hood suffer from what's called PTSD, and I'll get into that a little bit later, post-traumatic stress disorder. And how even if you have a rough, for a mom, a rough pregnancy, it affects you. And this has been proven, by the way. So, Devi Dev, you're, you're on point. If you are in a womb where there's chaos, craziness, domestic violence, your brain actually is channeled differently and it actually grows differently. And this affects you the rest of your life. The neurons and the neuron pathways affects you. So, uh, and at least outbursts and explosive temper... And what is your environment? Chaos. And what I got from Kendrick was a lot of chaos, a lot of chaos growing up. And just like, who am I? Do I love myself? Where am I? Where am I coming from? Where am I going? So it's very, very interesting. What's interesting to me also is, Kendrick, I want to ask you this question. In Compton, is every African-American kid that goes for a clinical diagnosis bipolar? 
Because it's fascinating here in Las Vegas, every black kid I've ever worked with automatically is bipolar, which is a statistical anomaly that every black kid in the inner city is bipolar. Bipolar, oppositional defiant, and boy, is he put on a lot of medication. So I wonder if that's the same thing in Compton for the people that you knew. Also, um, in the scene of him sticking his head out of the car and he's doing this, to me, it was saying, I don't have control. I wish I had control, but I don't have control. I'm not, you know, where I want to be. Now, he also brought up a comment with her. He said, in L.A., all I know is the gang culture. You're in a narrow box, boxed in. That was interesting to me because we try and get away from where we came from. But what is that sometimes? You know, what does it mean to be around stability? What does it mean to be around calmness? What does it mean not to have screaming and yelling? I grew up, unfortunately, in a chaotic family. I'm not comparing myself to Kendra, Graham, and else, blah, blah. But I didn't have the most stable environment growing up, and I got married. I have children. I'm married now, like, uh, 73 years. And the question is, have I, have I gotten better than what I saw growing up with my parents? Did I improve? Did I become a better human being? And I think Kendrick talks a lot about that in his own way, is what kind of man is he turning into? And finally, the, the, from the radio interview, he talked about self-worth. How do you feel about yourself? All we are worth is the gun on the corner or the dope, not worth anything. And that's what happens when you're in like an inner city dump and all you know is the gun, the dope, the needle, the pipe. That's how you view yourself. You don't view yourself as that it was worth anything. So therefore you can't, people say to me, well, why do people live like that? Why do they screw up? Why are they so dysfunctional? Well, what would you expect? In stability and calmness, you grow. You go from strength to strength to strength. In chaos, when there's no stable father, no stable mother, grandparents raising you, and all you see around you is negative environment, why would you, why would you be successful? That would be freaky if it was. So now what I want to do is I like to play the song I, and then I want to break it down with certain lyrics, and I want to talk about depression that I brought an article from some of the common signs of depression. So we're going to play the song I, we're going to play it in its entirety, and then I'm going to break it down. Here we go. Okay, that song just, the song just ended, the video just ended. I want to bring a couple of points out. What I like, the part we didn't hear was, that's actually one of the Isley brothers, uh, dressed in white. And he was, they were talking about, you know, Kendrick speaking for, I'm assuming, the African-American community with the hip-hop community. But it's like, boom, I love myself, I love myself. The things I got out of that video, interesting to me, when I see white, and I saw him do this outside the car, the allegory to me was, honestly, related to Jesus Christ. You know, like this, like I've died for your sins. You know, I, I, I've sacrificed myself. This is who I am because he's waving, he's waving, he's waving, and then he ends up almost like this outside the car door as it's riding. And it, that's what, what I took out of it. Like he's, he's had enough. He's, he's nailed to the cross, literally. And he talks so much about faith, which I found very, very interesting as well, and how he brought it together. Also interesting to me was how he starts off like this, and the woman's braiding his hair in the club, and then it ends up with him going back to the club, and he's still doing this, and she's going back to braiding, which makes you wonder, was it really a dream? You know, was it a dream set inside a video, inside his mind of who he is? Now, I'm gonna go, I want to go back to a couple of lines in there. I have to get rid of past some of the N-words and some of the uh, F-bombs and things like that. But to me, what's interesting was that he goes like this. You know that misery do love company. What do you want from me and my scars? Scars to me referring to his life experiences. You know, who we are as a person, as a man. And in his case, let's say as a black man. He could also say the same thing to me as a white guy. What, what do we bring to the table as men, as people, as leaders? But where's our battle wounds? Have we been in combat, metaphorically? But what do we bring to the table... When he said, my scars, my scars, seeing things of 
violence, anger, tension, that scars. That's what I got. Not physical, necessarily. Mental. Also, when he said this for me, everyone lacks, everybody lacks confidence. Everyone, everybody lacks confidence. Relates to kids. How many teenagers will say to you, they talk tough, but they're weak. They're growing. They're trying to figure out who they are. And in a confused world that he grew up in, where he sees around him, every, everybody does lack confidence. Makes total sense. There's a comment he makes in another uh, one of the articles about teenagers coming up to him after concerts or before concerts saying, hey, you saved my life. I was messed up. I was on drugs, like street drugs, or meds. A lot of Seracol there. Nothing personal, Kendrick. A lot of, uh, you know, Depakote, trust me. A lot of Prozac, you know, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, whoa, a lot of meds. And also, I got this too. How many times... Our potential was anonymous. Who really sees the real me? So often kids get, you know, enveloped in like, you know, does anyone know I exist? Does my parents care about me? Do my friends care about me? If I didn't live tonight, after tonight, would the world care about me? What is my potential? What am I going to bring to the table? And that's such a human, human way of expressing it. A really good job. And then he brings it down. He goes, I said, I got to get up. Life is more than suicide. And he talked about suicidal feelings and how many kids take their own lives all the time. They just don't feel like I'm worth anything. I mean nothing. Life is more than suicide. And there's, I can find my own happiness. I can find what makes me feel good about myself, who I am, and where I want to be. And then in the last one, in the last paragraph, he says, I've been dealing with depression ever since an adolescent. All right, let me clarify something. Depression is the number one illness in the world. And that's the number one reason why people go to doctors around the world. Eight billion people is depression. So when he says that, he's stating such an obvious fact, but to his credit, he's bringing it out to center stage. I suffer from depression. All the fame... The women, the gold, the gold, you know, the, the you know, the trappings, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Not happy. I suffer from depression. I'm, who am I? Who I love? Do I do I love myself? And in Hebrew it's a term called ahava, love. Do you have love for somebody? Do you have love for you? And that's what he struggles with. Like he left Compton to go onto a world stage. Am I still Kendrick? Am I still who I am from Compton? Have I lost my values? So, you know, in the end, he has the F-bomb there, which I'm not going to say on air. But, you know, I love myself and strong. Because to me, that, that last paragraph was he was in distress. You know, I'm dealing with depression, ducking every other blessing. I can never see the message. Never take the lead. I can never bob and weave. You know, annihilate me. Things are moving so quickly. Let my mama know I'm free. Give my story to my kids and to the glory. And make me scream out, I love myself. Wow. So, very, very powerful. So, to me, you know, in those scenes there also, with the man and woman fighting and the guy putting the gun to his head, my gut tells me he's seen a lot of that. I know I saw a lot of that growing up. I grew up in a rough, fairly rough neighborhood in Brooklyn. Boom, 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 boom. You know? So... That was interesting to me, and the guy with the gun, too, is that I have a feeling he's been around that more than once. So, what I want to do now is, just to clarify for the people that are watching this video, hopefully more than, uh, more than one or two, uh, I want to just break down really quickly what depression is and what it isn't. When you're depressed, okay, you got a bleak outlook. You feel what's called helpless and hopeless, all right? Sleep changes. To me, it was interesting watching that first video because it's like, to me, he's not sleeping. He's dreaming. It's restless sleep at best. And so many millions of Americans don't sleep because of stress and depression and difficult life. So when he's doing the running and he's out of the car and he's doing this and this, that's what I got. Hard times with sleep. You know, not sleeping. Also, I got was self-loathing. Don't care about myself. I'm not happy with who I am. I came out of Compton. I had friends that were killed. Self-loathing. Okay. And depression, suicide. 
are like hamburger and ketchup. They go hand in hand, trust me. Depression, suicide, boom, like that. So you have an unusual preoccupation with death or dying. Hello, kind of there in the video. All right? Depression in men, real quick, okay? Men will complain about fatigue, irritability, sleep, loss of interest, and anger, aggression, violence. And men are at a higher suicide risk, especially older guys. So also, there's also last thing, there's a thing called the Stein, which is low-grade depression, and people deal with that as well. Okay, and finally, I want to get real quick, what are some of the lifestyle changes? Supportive relationships, regular exercise and sleep, manage your stress, and changing negative thought patterns. And that's how you help to defeat the depression and feel better about who you are. We're going to stop here, we're going to have part two, I want to go over the other song. But thank you for those that are watching. Be good.